we're going to be introducing today the uh, chapter on weathering in your earth science class. You've been taking this class online over the last few weeks, and now we're going to start a new section. And today's, uh, the purpose of today's lesson is to introduce the section and give you some tools on uh, doing, um, getting through this online lesson a little more efficiently. Uh, one of the sections you just completed was on rocks and minerals. Is there a couple of things you could tell me, Trevor, um, uh, that you remember for sure about the rocks and minerals? Uh, the uh, kind of the isol the uh, rocks, the the base on them or whatever. Okay. The hardness and them on the scales. The okay. Put them on a scale for the hardness. Okay. The most scale. Yeah, so the they have a range from 1 up to 10. So various minerals are, are harder or softer than other minerals. Mm -hmm. And, and then they, go ahead. Then they scratch, and one, another thing is like the scratch when you see the uh, camera, they scratch. Okay, so they, again, they determine then their qualities or the, or the, or the, or what the rocks are made of and that kind of thing. And various minerals have different qualities depending on how they're, they're scratched and that sort of thing. Okay. All right, and then they come from different places. You, you probably learned about the, the igneous rocks that come from the volcanoes and the sedimentary rocks, and then the rocks that change over time with heat and weather called metamorphic mm -hmm. rocks. Okay, all right. So as we talk about the Earth's surface, you know, we're going to talk about this thing called weather. So, uh, Zach, what, what do you think might be covered in this section about weather and when we talk about rocks and the Earth's surface? Okay, so things like wind and water, uh, heat perhaps, could have an effect on rocks, right? Okay, so we're going to look at maybe in this section uh, how these things affect the, the various surface of the Earth. If you're, <coughs> if you're looking at the Earth's surface, what things do you already know that make mountains or make valleys and that sort of thing that you already may have learned about in other classes? <coughs> Besides weather, uh, is there anything else that, excuse me, is there anything else that you know for sure has changed the surface of the of the earth? The sun, maybe. From what? The sun, maybe. Well, besides weathering, are there any other things, Zach, that um, you may have thought of? No. Okay. What about like volcanoes? And you, you know, vo yeah. volcanoes come up. And also things like glaciers that push along. Okay, so this is another way that the Earth's surface is actually affected. Uh, I want to have you guys, and I want you to make a list of this for me, please. Uh, speculate a little bit about what you think you might learn in this section about weather. What, how do you think weather might, in fact, affect the surface of the Earth? Can you think of a couple ways that maybe that happens? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, like, uh, when it gets cold and, like, say, or it rains and it gets cold, or it doesn't really make the rocks and stuff, like, Okay. And All right, really good. All right, so, you, so we might learn about the fact that water might seep in between rocks, it might freeze and break rocks apart, right? Okay, good. Can you think of anything else on how weather might... Okay, so, so a lot of rain could cause rocks to slide down hills that could change the, the, the formation of rocks. Okay. Any other ways that you think you might you might have uh, a change in, in the Earth's surface from weather? Could an earthquake count? Yeah, earthquake, earthquake would be good. That's not really weathering, but certainly that's going to change things as well. I, I, we'll see if it's in here. So write that down and we'll see if it's in there. So so you might in fact have, have something like earthquakes. But I don't know if they're, they're going to call that weathering. We'll find out. What about wind? Is wind a way that could change rocks? Yeah. Definitely, right? As long, long, long uh, sustained periods of high winds can blow, blow rocks, smooth rocks, that sort of thing. And then, of course, rain. Uh, lots of rain that might fall, accumulates, runs down, you know, can actually create rivers and that sort of thing. So those are some of the things we might we might learn about as we as we move forward. All right. Uh, so here is the uh, introductory slide for the section. And when you're doing an OpenNet online class, 
uh, I think it's really important to take the step that we just took to sort of speculate about what might we be learning because then as if, then if you're curious about something if you set up some questions in your own head is is a earthquake a, a form of weathering or how how can wind really change a rock it just you know those sorts of things if you can have those sorts of questions going into your Novanet session then I think you'll you'll, you'll have the ability to, to sort of keep the information they're giving you a little more straight all right, uh, so if you guys could read this to yourself, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. You looked like you were done a little bit sooner than, than, than Trevor. And uh, when you were reading this, uh, did you do, do you remember what the two different types of weathering might be? Mechanical and chemical. Mechanical and chemical. And do you agree with that? Okay. Uh, were there any words in here that you were struggling with, Trevor, as you were reading through this? Um, just, uh, at first, like in, internal. At first, in, in, in. Oh, internal forces. Okay. And then I got it, but it just took me a second. Okay, well that's good. What helped you get through it, do you that's think? Went forward a little bit. Okay, so you were able to get the context of what it meant as you went forward. Okay, good. So now there's two types of things, chemical and weathering. Do we do we have enough information to know what these things are about? Okay, no, Not yet, we don't, we right? We don't yet. We're probably going to learn about it. When I hear the word chemical, what, what, what comes to your mind when you think about chemical change? Bad? Okay. Well, what do you think? So when you talk about ke chemical changes to the Earth's surface. It's like a chemical reaction, like you put two things together and it comes out from these substances. Okay, so very good. So we're going to have some sort of reaction that isn't like wind or isn't like rain, but I wonder what it could be because it's not like people are running around dropping a bunch of acid all over the Earth or something. So something else is going on, right? All right, so let's take a look at the next slide then. All right, so what they're going to tell you in this chapter is you're going to be able to describe mechanical and uh, chemical uh, weathering, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how fast it goes. And when I was looking at this chapter, that's the one thing I thought of is, you know, I could see how wind could be blowing against a rock, but how many years must it take for wind blowing against a rock to actually have some effect, right? So as, as, what's that? Probably a long time. A long time, right? So that, that's the kind of stuff that I'm just thinking about is that I would like to learn as I'm going through this is, is how could there be a chemical reaction and how long does this really take? You know, this, this probably takes a really long time. All right, so we're going to look here and ask them. All right, so each chapter starts with um, these key terms. Okay, now, if you look at those terms, are those things familiar to you at all? Maybe mechanical weathering, but maybe not. And the other ones are really different kind of words, right? So I think it's really important that when you're starting a chapter in Novanet, that you take a couple of minutes and try to come up with what these words mean. Now, it isn't enough ever when we're doing vocabulary to just look up an answer and say that we know it. So what I want to do here is I want to open up each of these terms and I want you to take some quick notes on what these terms mean and then I want you to, in a sentence to use that term in a sentence that you will understand. And it could be about anything. It doesn't have to be a scientific term. I want to be able to tell that you know what these things mean. Okay? Does that make sense? So let's, let's, uh, let's open up the first one here. Um, which is in our glossary. So we'll look up uh, mechanical weather. It should be in our glossary. There it is. All right, so there's 
So you might write that down or, or take a note on it because in a minute I'm going to ask you to actually write a sentence with it, okay? Now, if there's words in there you don't understand, what do we do? You could ask. You could ask. Right. I mean, obviously, you can always ask. You could ask a classmate. You could ask me. Or you can look it up. Well, let's assume or you understand what physical means, right? Okay. What about this word? What is this word? Well, let's see if we can, we can figure it out. Uh, it's made up of a lot of different parts of, of words, right? So when we talk about dis, D-I-S, do you know what that usually means? Is that a usually a plus or a minus kind of thing? A plus. A plus? What do you think? A minus. A minus. If you disassemble something, uh, right, you're taking it apart, okay? All right. So then if we, if, have you ever heard the word integration before? Where have you heard that word? Like people... Like in a race aspect, yeah. right? Where integration, where you're mixing people together, right? So what do you think disintegration would be? To go spread apart. Take them apart, right? And so when we're talking about physical disintegration of rock resulting in smaller fragments, this is very much like what you were describing before. When, when the water might get between cracks, it would freeze and things would break up. So that's a process of disintegration, okay? So we talk about mechanical weathering. There's something going on with water or wind or anything else smashing that is actually going to break a rock apart. Okay? So you understand what that is? Yeah. All right. Because in a minute, I'm going to ask you to write a sentence about it. All right. Our next word was frost wedging. Now, I'm wondering, at this point, can you, can you think of what frost wedging might be? Maybe... And that's like where he said where the wire would get in. That's what happens when the wire gets in. Okay, so all of a sudden we're, we're able to sort of connect the ideas of the chapter to words that we know. We understand what frost is and we understand what wedging is, is you know, moving something in. Okay, here it is. It's exactly what you were talking about. So frost wedging is the mechanical breakup of a rock caused by expanding of freezing water and cracks and crevices. So you didn't even know you knew this much about weathering, did you? But you do. So make, take some notes on this because you're going to use this in a sentence as well. Let's go look at this next one, talus. Any idea what that might be? I have to admit, I have no idea, so don't that feel bad. Like a fox it does sound like that, doesn't it? All right, let's go see what they have to say. There it is right here. Ah, all right. So what? So what's talus? Alright, well, what, uh, do you understand what all these words are? Yeah. Okay. So, Zach, can you explain what, what talus might be? I believe that's like all the rocks from Rivering. Like, they fell in from the mountain and they're gathering just where they're falling. At. Okay, remember before, it was one of the things he said about landslides. Mm -hmm. So, if you have rocks that fall down the hill, all that stuff lays at the bottom of the hill or the cliff, and that's called a talus. Okay? All right, and remember, you're going to have to put this in a sentence of your own design in just a moment. All right, any idea about exfoliation? Exfoli yeah, exfoliation. Any idea what that might be? Well, before we go to look at the definition, let's look at the word. Uh, uh, exfoliation, I'm sorry. What is ex usually as a, is that, this is another prefix of a word that means either past already? Yeah, that's, that's that, right, ex, right. Could mean in the past, could mean also taking out, like export something, sends it out of the country, all right? So there's something that's leaving, right? And does, that, does foliation mean anything to you at all? 
If it doesn't, that's fine. But this is when we're trying to get new words that are difficult. We want to try to break them up. So something's coming off, right? Or something's going out. Okay, but we don't know what. So let's take a look here at exfoliation. Okay, so I'm sorry, you're, are you ready or no? Alright, so it, can you explain in your own words what exfoliation looks like without reading up here? Do you have any idea about, I mean, there's a lot of big words here all strung together. And they're actually not big words, but there's a lot of words strung together. Do you understand what's going on here with exfoliation? I think so. <laughs> you think so? Maybe. All right, well, I'm going to give you a chance to prove it when you write a sentence in just a minute. All right. uh, this word, we also hear this, and you may have heard this in commercials, uh, when people talk about exfoliating their skin. You ever hear that, like this soap can, will help you exfoliate your skin? Have you heard that, maybe? And what they're talking about is peeling layers of your dead skin off, okay? So, like, there are brushes and things that you can scrape off your dead skin. So... It's the same idea here. You're peeling off X and you're taking off these layers. Okay. All right. So I want you to take a couple minutes now. And I'll, I'll tell you what we'll do is, Zach, I'm going to have you do uh, the first one and the, and the uh, third turn. And uh, Trevor, I want you to do the, the second and the fourth turn. Come up with a sentence that will show me that you understand what those words mean. And it could be about anything. Okay. It doesn't have to be about rocks, but you certainly can make it about rocks if you want. All right, so I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. And then when we come back, we're going to actually get into the lesson and see how uh, we can begin outlining uh, the things as we go. All right? All right, good. Okay. Did you press What's that? Did you just press this middle button again? Just, yeah, kill it. <laughs> 